Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... Business reports were neatly stacked on Samuel Hammond's desk in his well-furnished study. The solitary table lamp cast a warm glow over the room. It was quiet. The flames from the log fire flickered in the broad hearth. There was an atmosphere of quiet contentment. This, one felt, must be the home of a well-educated, civilised man of sober habits. A home where peace always reigned. And then... The silence was shattered by a terrible scream and a crash. Seconds later, the door to the study burst open. Samuel Hammond rushed in, slammed the heavy door behind him, and began piling furniture against it, barricading himself in. Got to. Got to keep him out. Got, got to. Got to. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. Episode 1 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel start their investigations into the strange case of... A Deadly Gift. Samuel Hammond, a large man in his mid-fifties, had the demeanour of an ex-army officer. And normally, his training made him a disciplined, thoughtful man who rarely panicked. But that evening in his study, all calmness was thrown to the winds. He worked like a madman, piling everything he could lay his hands on, a low settee, tables and chairs, in front of the heavy door. <coughs> when he built an effective barricade, he paused and listened. Nothing. Nothing at all. He's gone away. He mopped his wet forehead with a spotlessly white handkerchief and moved towards the desk, reaching out for the telephone. I must get help. I must. His nervous fingers drummed the polished wood of the desk as he waited for the call to be answered. He picked up an unusually shaped fountain pen and tapped anxiously. Oh, come on. Come on. There was no reply. And then another sound became audible, the sound of enormous clumping footsteps. Hammond dropped the phone back into its cradle. He reached for a large shotgun on the wall. He opened the desk drawer with trembling fingers, found two shells which he loaded into the gun, and briskly snapped the barrel back into place. The footsteps, which had got louder, didn't stop at the door. They broke through it, pushing aside all the furniture as though it wasn't there. No! No! Hammond raised the shotgun and emptied both barrels at the enormous figure of a man who appeared through the wreckage. The figure stopped in front of the desk. There was a curious whip-like sound as it raised one arm and brought it down on Hammond. The shotgun fell to the carpet. The metallic barrel twisted into a curved loop like a piece of soft wire. In John Steed's apartment, Mrs. Peel sat staring pensively at two small interlocking pieces of metal. They lay on a green baize card table. They represented one of those irritating puzzles which, if you get the right combination of moves, can be parted with the greatest of ease. If you don't get the right movements, 
They become even more twisted into each other until you either throw the puzzle across the room and go quietly mad or carry on for another futile hour or so. John Steed approached. Hmm. Thinking it out first, Mrs. Peel. I've tried everything. It isn't possible, Steed. I've moved through all the permutations and it isn't possible to separate those two pieces of metal. Hmm. Want a bet? You think you can? I can make you believe I have, uh, create the illusion. Oh, stop talking in riddles. Well, we're talking in puzzles, much the same thing. Uh, want to place that bet? You're on. The usual? Champagne supper on me, if you can do it. Steed picked up the two pieces of metal. He held the end of each in either hand, and with a flamboyant gesture, which would have done credit to a professional conjurer, threw his arms into the air. Seconds later, two pieces of metal landed on the green cloth table. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Now you see it, now you don't. It's a question of know-how. Oh, excuse me. Steed? Oh. Oh, yes, Mother. No, 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 she's here. Uh, yes, I see. Yes, very well. Uh, can, you, can you give me that address again? Steed drew a fountain pen from his pocket. Yes. Yes, I've got that. Right. Yes, we'll report. My... Mother? Yes. Work. Come on, Mrs. Peel. Let's uh, leave the playthings and get down to business. Right. But can you explain how you did that? That trick? And give away a free champagne supper. Oh, very well. Steed slipped a hand into his cuff and produced the original pieces of metal firmly welded together. He threw them onto the table alongside the separated pieces. Steed, you cheated. Hmm, ever since Eaton, life itself is an illusion, Mrs. Beale. Uh, shall we go? In the study of Samuel Hammond's house, John Steed prodded with the end of his umbrella at the broken hinge of the heavy door. He moved about the room, taking in every detail with a professional air. The body of Samuel Hammond had been removed, but the twisted shotgun still lay on the desk. Interesting, isn't it, Mrs. Beale? What on earth is it? Shotgun. Rather unique. Wherever you aim, you hit the chandelier. Hmm. I thought you might like to check on Mother's files. Should I recap? Please do. First victim, Walter Carlson, found dead in his apartment on the 5th, fractured skull. Number two, Andrew Denham in his penthouse on the 6th, fractured skull. And last night, Samuel Hammond... Oh, don't tell me, fractured skull. Broken neck. Oh, sorry. Well, here's the list of their holdings. Carlson was chairman of commercial imports, mm -hmm. Denham head of auto engineering, and Hammond on the board of electrical industries. Hmm, all the way up in the top bracket. Where the vultures gather. Meaning? Well, it's difficult to reach the top without making enemies. Could it be revenge? Some hired assassin? No. No, professional killers don't use a battering ram to get to their victims. Whoever came through that door was in a wild frenzy. I suppose Hammond wasn't expecting anyone. Seen an appointment book? Well, there is a desk diary, but at the time of death, one wouldn't have expected a visitor. At least, not that type of visitor. There's a note down here, Harachi, 2.30... No other interest. Mm. Well, it looks like a dead end. Correction. Three dead ends. Yes. It makes one wonder if there'll be a fourth, doesn't it? At the entrance of the block of buildings marked Administration Industrial Developments Limited, Great Britain, the security guard, who was quietly dozing on duty, heard a very distinctive sound. He shook the sleep from his head with a sudden gesture, wiped his eyes with the back of his hand, and gathered his thoughts. The sound approached. Hey. Hey, you. Who are you? The footsteps grew louder. Lumbering along the corridor appeared the figure of an enormous man. His black coat was flapping behind him. His shoulders massive. The black trilby hat pulled down low over his eyes. His hands, hanging stiffly at his sides, were contained in black silk gloves. Stop! Stop! Do you hear me? The figure advanced without varying its pace. It approached the guard and... <laughs> the noise didn't penetrate to the inner office where Lambert, a well-groomed, high-powered executive, was talking on the telephone. Have you got that figure, Miss Forbes? Yes, Mr. Lambert. How's the Harachi deal? Yeah, well, I'm seeing their representative this afternoon. 
Yeah, excuse me a moment. The other phone's ringing. Lambert? What? Well, why call me? You've got a dozen men in security. Now, don't bother me again. Are you still there, Miss Forbes? Yes, indeed, sir. What seems to be the trouble, Mr. Lambert? That was security. It seems that someone has got in without a pass. Nothing to do with that. Uh, now, look here. About that estimate, yes, I want the whole cost of the first quarter and... Uh, what the devil? Uh, hold on a moment, Miss Forbes. What is it? What is it, Mr. Lambert? Just hold on. Lambert pushed back his chair and stood up, heading for the door. But before he got there, a gloved fist crashed through the wooden panel. Lambert reacted by rushing to the desk and opening a drawer. He grabbed a revolver and pointed it at the enormous figure that burst through the door. Who, who, who are you? What do you want? Keep away or I'll... Lambert emptied the entire barrel at the advancing figure. It continued relentlessly, stopped in front of Lambert. No. 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 Mr. Lambert. Mr. Lambert, what's happened? Are you all right? What is it? Mr. Lambert. Can you hear me, Mr. Lambert? Mr. Lambert. Some hours later, John Steed and Emma Peel arrived on the scene. Steed walked through the broken doorway. Extraordinary. Much easier to have just used the handle. The guy who was knocked out said the man was enormously big. Mm. And he was bulletproof, too. Look. Steed picked up two blunt-nosed bullets from the carpet. These bullets must have been fired at point-blank range. They merely flattened themselves on the target. A bulletproof man, and he got victim number four. Adds to the confusion a bit, doesn't it, Mrs. Peel? Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. Cold Water Omo.